So, this is just continuing off the last video, I guess. So, talking about having free energy. I don't mean like free energy, like, you know, like electrical energy that, you know, is renewable or whatever. I'm talking about freed up energy from your own self in the human body. Freed energy. Or, let's say, um, ready energy. Or let's just say, um, undedicated energy, let's say. So you have, you have meditation, breathing, posture, and you have undedicated energy. You stop thinking, your brain uses the most blood oxygen in the body. You're not moving, your muscles aren't using any oxygen or energy. So then, what does your energy do? Well, your body has a bunch of stuff that you can't control. Movement, kinetic energy, requires physical energy to happen. Your body does stuff subconsciously under your skin, moving without you being conscious or intentional of it. So, it goes to reason that if you're meditating and you're not moving, and you stop thinking, which that's often the hardest part, because when you stop moving, all the blood goes to whatever is has the highest load, and that's your brain because it has the highest load. Compared to your entire body, it has the highest load after your entire body. So when your body is just moving, your, your body has the thing. It's jogging or something is a lot subconscious. It's a lot like meditation because you know your brain's not using as much of that energy because your body's using it. So your brain doesn't really get to think because your body has a physical override. So the brain is like, really powerful and it uses a lot of blood. And of course, our, you know, that's where our cognitive centers are, the body still has physical override. So when you stop the body, you stop the brain, then you become conscious of breathing, you know, and posture, and relaxation, and then you have this undedicated energy. And what it does is it powers your subconscious systems to do the type of things like like it, when you clean your computer you have a program that goes through and it cleans everything but you can't run that program often at the same time as you watch a movie or you do something else you know you're on Facebook or whatever but um, so it can't run simultaneously there's a bit of simultaneousness you know your body doesn't stop working because you start thinking but it can't do its full job Energy doesn't necessarily just sit in any one location. You know, there's not an organ of your body where stuff just sits and it waits for you to have, you know, these high energy tasks. Maybe with ATP, but our our energy is flowing through our body, through veins and arteries, and through other channels in our body that are similar to veins and arteries. And when you have this undedicated energy, you're not using it for anything. It is scanning your computer, your brain, your body, you know, everything else. And it's doing these tasks, it's put off for a while. You know, it could be loosening up tissues and with flow, you know, taking plaque off your bones or between cartilage or something like that. It could be, you know, building up more more tissue or more cartilage between joints, you know. It could be, you know, the extra energy directs you to your posture and makes you very conscious of, oh, my back actually kind of hurts because I'm not in proper posture. Oh, my back actually hurts more, but now I know that it's working because I can I'm conscious of it. I can just tell how it should be. So it does that, and then you'll correct all these little things that were these little drains on your energy. All these little things that have built up, all of the stuff on your computer, all the extra apps that downloaded with stuff that you wanted but you didn't want those extra things. 
your body goes through and gets rid of all those one by one well it gets you to get rid of them and this could be gradual or instant it depends but the more of these little things that you get rid of the more energy you have that is undedicated which means you know you have more free energy and if you invest your energy into positive things these are positive and negative is not like good or bad it's defined as what gives you more energy and what takes away from your energy you know if you are doing a bunch of paperwork you know chances are at the end of that in addition to the physical energy it took which probably wasn't very much you'll feel very drained because it's not really a human type of activity it's much more of a computer type of activity but we didn't really understand that until we invented computers so you know it was just something that was necessary however if you do something like a jog you know it uses more energy than paperwork but you feel more energized after you do it so paperwork is a negative energy influencer and jogging is a positive energy influencer you know spending time with someone that you don't agree with is a negative energy influencer although it can still be valuable spending time with someone that you have a good rapport with is a positive energy influencer you know eating candy will give you energy immediately and then drain your energy eating good food doesn't really you don't have that much motivation to do it immediately but then over the medium to long term I'm talking days to weeks you feel a lot better so it's a positive influence of energy so if you could really go through your life and figure out you could even make a chart there's a thing called an Eisenhower matrix if you want to make a chart and on the divide it into four boxes and on the left hand say negative energy impact and on the right hand say positive energy impact and on the left hand on the bottom say unnecessary and on the left or the right hand on the bottom say necessary so you have necessary yeah necessary negative energy impact unnecessary negative energy impact necessary positive energy impact unnecessary positive energy impact and though something can still be unnecessarily positive like you know going to let's say you go to the movies with someone in your family and you enjoy that and you feel great after that that's great it can add in but it's not necessarily necessary so it could actually be replaced by a better more involving activity with that same family member that you could enjoy more it's possible you don't have to but it's possible so it's not necessary so you can change that one possibly but if it's necessary like let's say you know driving your kid to school you know it takes energy but you feel good after because you know you're playing the parental role you know you boost their mood in the car and you know like set them up for having a good day you know our day is often determined by you know our how our morning is and our morning is often influenced by the people in our home that we interact with in the morning because when we first wake up you know it's just like being born again you know when you first wake up you have your environment okay it includes your bed you know your body and then the people around you the food that you eat your actions and stuff and then that beginning part of your day sets the whole day so if you can especially look at the beginning of your day and the end of your day but start at the beginning and do that chart figure out what you do at the beginning of the day and the end of the day that is positive versus negative for your energy and figure out if it's necessary or unnecessary and then just work towards eliminating immediately try to eliminate or immediately eliminate negative unnecessary energy effectors just get rid of them you should that should be your top priority um, stuff that's negative and necessary you're not going to eliminate but 
changing your perspective towards it can be helpful. If you can, if, if it is necessary, like let's say, you know, going to work so that, or having money so that you can provide for your children and then, you know, you have to work because of that, you can find a better way to provide money for sure. You know, you can still, you can override anything, but you might as well not fix something unless it's broken or unless you have nothing better to fix, right? So, you know, the stuff that's necessary and negative, just alter your perspective about it. If you hate your job, but, you know, it provides for your family, you can alter your perspective, you know, you can say, you know, this is for all the right reasons. Ultimately, that might not help you as a person, but it's going to keep the bills paid until you can find another job. So if you make the intention, you make the effort, you make the commitment, the dedication to find a new job and find a job that's more satisfying and still provides for your family at an equal or greater value, and you do that while not compromising your current position, then you can make that negative necessary into a positive necessary. And you know, that's a huge, huge change. You'll see immediate and large long-term changes in your life from changing from a job that isn't fulfilling to a job that is fulfilling, keeping the same, you know, the same payback for that. And you, know, you can go through everything, everything you can optimize. And, you know, maybe you could take an hour out of every week, just an hour a week and a specific day and don't miss it ever. And if you do, it doesn't matter, but then just do it immediately as soon as you realize you've missed it and then do it the same proper time the next time, you know, and just go through every aspect of your life, you know. If it helps to use some sort of thing so that you can open your eyes a little bit wider, um, this is a metaphor, to look at your life and analyze things in greater detail, then you know you might want to try that as well. But it's not necessarily necessary. You, you know, but just analyze your life. You know, I, I was a really messy person before, but I was an organized type of person. So. I wanted everything to be organized, but everything was not organized because I just couldn't comprehend it being organized. As you can see now, I don't know, it's not perfect, but everything is organized now. Everything except for that and that has a place. You know, this is here temporarily. It goes in here. That's where all of my cards that are in sorted go. It's chaos. Because I haven't sorted it yet, but it has a place. And I feel a lot better now that it has a place. And every time something gets out of whack, I notice that another thing that saps your energy is disorder. So I don't like dishes. I don't mind the laundry so much, but it is a, it's a pain in the ass time wise, because you have to dedicate a lot of time to being in a certain spot. And I spontaneous but when I do the laundry when I do the dishes when I clean my room when I do the recycling the garbage whatever I, I, I hate doing that stuff I hate all of it but you know I don't really think about that anymore it's it's not really even a thing anymore like I hate it while I'm not doing it but while I'm doing it I just stop thinking now and just do it and when I'm done doing it I feel so much better so relieved especially if I'm by myself here you know you can only blame your problems on other people for you know a couple minutes after they leave because at that point you can fix it and it'll be nice until they get back and even if they ruin it, it doesn't matter but um, basically what I'm saying is create order you know divide and conquer your own life you know you go into your your junk drawer that looks like this and make it look more organized. You know, go through your books. 
If you have books, I hope that you do, and organize them all. This is my my books that, although some of these I've read before, that I intend to read next. These are books that I find useful, that I will finish reading as well. Actually, the organized mine there should be over here. Also, this should. But these are, of course, organized by height onto this shelf because these ones are taller. You see, I got my hard covers, hard covers, soft covers through there. Got this here. It was over here, but it's kind of in the way, so I put it here. But it's kind of chaotic, but still quite organized. I have all my cards. I started writing everything on paper instead of putting it on my phone because my phone I could not organize. So I had 3,000 notes. Yes, I know, a little neurotic, but you know, I was more neurotic. But I had 3,000 notes and I couldn't organize them at all. And I couldn't get them off my phone because they weren't compatible with um, taking the memory off through a memory card. So I was screwed, they were stuck there. And so what I did is I abandoned them, I let go of them, I was really attached to them, and I said, if I, if I lose these, I'm going to flip the fuck out. If I drop my phone, or anything happens, I'm going to flip out. But, no, uh, I'll kill whoever destroys my phone, because that's how much I'm attached to it. But, at a certain point, I realized how neurotic that was, carrying that around with me, knowing it could be damaged or destroyed at any time, anywhere, you know, avoiding certain activities like going in the water because I had this stupid phone with me. You know, a human can go in the water, but a human can't go in the water with their phone. And if a human leaves their phone on the shore while they go in the water, they're going to have anxiety about their phone because, you know, it's, it's a compromisable type of thing. So what I did is, I still carry my phone, I just don't really use it. It's more of a thing I stick in my bag because I don't want it, you know, near my genitals. And because, you know, I could use it to call 911 if I needed to. I don't have a phone plan. That's another thing I totally got rid of. Phone plan. Like, I'll, I'll get one when I have people that I'm accountable to, for sure. But I'll just get a pay-as-you-go, because I'm not going to be using it, except for, you know, setting up meetings. You know, I, I hate making my bed. I make my bed. You know, I hate prepping food, I prep food so that when I wake up in the morning, you know, I can go downstairs and eat a already prepared sandwich that's fresh from last night. When I when I am going to bed, I set out all my clothes for myself for the next day. I pour a glass of water. I drink some of the water. I drink water before bed because I find it helps me sleep. I'm not sure why. My body likes water when it's asleep. I go to the bathroom a lot while I'm asleep, but then I get to sleep fine, so it's good. I don't get it. Um, but I, So I fill up my water, drink some of them, I fill it up again, and I put it there. I clean everything now. Um, I get rid of my dirty clothes, the laundry. You know, I, I make more of an effort to avoid any sort of electronics in the last hour. And... You know, I try not to smoke within the last couple hours at least because I don't want to make my mind active again. And I fill up my water bottles, my bag, you know. Sometimes uh, well, I'll put my keys and my wallet and my glasses all in one place. And uh, I have note paper here at home that I can write on. I have a box of note paper and pens. I got a lot of pens in my bag so that when I'm out I can write. I have a piece of note paper tucked into the back of my phone so that I can write on that if I want and I carry a pen with me just in my pocket. That's not in the way or anything. So I never have to worry about not being able to get something down, creative or otherwise. Even if I have to write down a date or a phone number or somebody's birthday or you know, something I found out about a person so that I can get to know them better. I forget a lot of stuff so it's not like I'm compiling stuff to use it against you. I'm compiling stuff so that I can be a better friend or a better, you know, whoever, right? 
and I have to write stuff down. It's just uh, my grandmother has to write stuff down. My mother has to write stuff down. I have to write stuff down. So it's just part of who I am. But now it's not as neurotic. Now I can do it and I can leave them at home, but I can take the ability to make them with me. And if all of my blank cards and my pens get destroyed, or the few notes that I haven't put into my sorting pile get destroyed, and it doesn't matter because it's just a few notes and it's no big deal. Or it's just a bunch of blank paper and it's no big deal. So then at the end of the day, I just go into my notes. I have a sorted, or I have a, you know, an unsorted section at the back and then the rest are just blank. Throw those in there. Back in the bag. My bag right here is a little chaotic because I have my laptop in there. Stick my book in the laptop pocket so it doesn't move around. My wallet's in there as well. Don't need that in there anymore. My camping knife. I put all of my camping stuff into this barrel. Except for some that I have in the garage that's too big for this barrel. It keeps everything out of sight. Not my wallet. Keep all of my hygienic stuff in one place. Keep my wallet on me for now. I hang out my sweaters. I'll put clothes right here if I have to. These are just, uh, I've worn them once, but not finished wearing them. And you know, I just, I prepare everything. You know, a lot of the time I have a bag packed if I think that, you know, I might be traveling or anything in the near future. And these closets, they were driving me nuts because my room like this for a while, I got it to look like this. But in the closet was just jam-packed chaos. So if I wanted anything out of the closet, I had to dig through a bunch of shit to get to it. So what happened was there was stuff I wanted to do and I didn't do it because it was in the closet. So now the closets are beautiful and my even more beautiful girlfriend is here so I have to go. Peace. I love you all. Have a good night.